January the 17th, 2023. Guys, this video is about the rapid changes that we're seeing in our weather patterns. And uh, we know that there's some manipulation of our weather, but I think on the larger scale, I mean, in certain areas, I know there's manipulation. We know there's global manipulation, um, but sometimes it's the Earth's natural changes that affect the atmosphere and affect the climate and that's what i want to talk about here this article is from the nerc british antarctic survey but they're talking about the magnetic field which circles the globe you have the north and south physical poles and you have the north and south magnetic poles and they they're different the magnetic pole is what makes a compass work but this study was how is the changing in the Earth's magnetic field, how does it affect our atmosphere, which space weather is Earth's weather, if you know what I'm talking about. The strength of the sun depends on the strength of our magnetic shield. Uh, it's a dynamo effect. You apply more energy to uh, an object, it's going to spin faster. The magnetic lines are going to increase. But... Um, what we're talking about here is something that's been changing over the last 50 years and is now rapidly expanding its change, and that is where our north magnetic poles are. Uh, and what that does, again, notice the title, huh? The Effects of Long-Term Changes in the Earth's Magnetic Field on the Atmosphere, Understanding the Past, Predicting the Future. If we scroll down to this abstract, I'm not going to get deep into it, and the reason is because I've got a lot of different uh, things to cover here to put it all together. It would take a long time to go deep into it, but I think you'll get the basic understanding. Some of you will understand it much m more than I do. It says, this project investigates the effect of changes in the Earth's internal magnetic field on the atmosphere and climate. The Earth's magnetic field has been changing relatively rapid in the recent times. During the last decade, the uh, position of the north magnetic pole has been moving at its fastest rate recorded so far at 40 to 60 kilometers per year in addition the magnetic field strength has been steadily decreasing at a rate of five to seven percent per century since 1840 which has led to speculations that we may be heading for a magnetic field reversal some studies have found correlations between changes in the earth's magnetic field and the climate parameters now this is from noah's historical magnetic declination information going back to 1590 you can see where this is canada the u.s is here here is your arctic circle now let me pull this up and we're going to so you can kind of get a better idea of what we're looking at now the blue lines indicate the oldest movement then it goes to red gets to yellow uh, and to the newest uh, markings or the newest measurements. So let's start this. If this map goes, if you can see here, 1590. So from 1590, this green dot in indicates where this uh, center for the magnetic field of the north was. So 1590, we're here. Let's go about 100 years. We're uh, here at 1696, say, and you can see that it moved from right here at this uh, beginning of the blue area all the way across uh, what is this the um, I can't read under that line this is Victoria Island here these part of the uh, uh, McClure Strait area the Northwest Passages but from we'll go back we'll just kind of keep an eye on the movement of that green dot back here began and let's get it up a little closer so here we are looking at two different things the direction and the distance between the dots if you see the space in the dots is moving a little faster and during the times when these measurements are right on top of each other it's moving slower so we're going back to 1590 you can see the year right here in the bottom right and um, that's where we're at 1590 let's go up let's go up here to um, 1665 it's come down through the blue area below Perry Island, uh, Melvin Island, and uh, has started a loop back. This kind of a natural loop as the Earth tilts, the magnetic 
um, excuse me, the Earth's magnetic field tilts. And again, that is caused, in my opinion, by the tilt of the Earth with the sun. Now, we're talking about magnetic fields here, but when the Earth tilt changes itself, then it's going to change the location of these magnetic fields because as the solar wind comes across the Earth, it's like a stone in the middle of a stream. It's going to, the water running behind it indicates the direction that that is coming from. And so as the tilt of the Earth changes slightly, so will the magnetic fields. And it also has to do with magnetic core in the Earth. But now we've came up from 1590 to 1665. We came back to this loop. Let's go up to 1700 here. And you notice how much closer the purple dots are. I can get a little closer. But uh, that means it's moving slower back. It's almost made it back to the beginning point. This is 1700 we're at now. Almost made it very close to where it began in 1590. Now let's go to 1800. Now you, you see a very rapid change. And it's all ready all the way here. The other side of Canada. Uh, the east of Victoria Island. So we're now 1881, starting to slow back down, very tight dots. Let's go up just to, you could come through the whole thing year by year. Let's go up to 1900. Not that fast, everything's tightening up, starting a reverse loop. But what has changed? And this is the year 1917. I'm going to back it out just to kind of show you where we are at now. All the way across the Arctic, we're he it's headed to Russia. We'll go through this timeline. 1900, we're here. Now, look at the vast changes in the last hundred years and how in the last few years, how far separated these dots are. That's rapid movement. 1900, let's come up to 1963. Still hasn't moved that far. Very tight uh, as far as your measurement points. We'll come up uh, here. Let me move this slightly. We're at 1985, still not that much movement, but it's not looping back. Now let's come up a little further in time. It's 2004. No sign of it looping back. We've got a, a big change going on on the planet. Now, this is just 2004, guys. Now, we'll go up in time. This is how fast it's moving. This is the year 2022, last year. One more year, 2023. And there we are. This is predicted for time for the rest of this year into 2025. This is not looping back. We're going into drastic changes. Let me pull it back again and just give you an idea. Those are our magnetic poles. That is where these magnetic lines of force are centered. And if you look at some of the information, uh, say, on the Earth's magnetic field in the relationship to the sun, you can tell, that, again, it's the stone and the water effect the way that the the top of the this is the top of the magnetic field all of these dots at these points of time and that is the top of this current flowing across so we're definitely indicating uh, changes in that which goes back to the um, section on how it affects our climate and guys we are about to find out and we have been finding out this year in 2022 we set many records let's look at one of those now, let's go back five days uh, for the information in the graphic. But the information at the top is warnings for t now going into tomorrow. It says a new round of severe thunderstorms, including some capable of producing tornadoes, will rumble across the southern U.S. from Wednesday to Thursday night. The areas at risk for this week's round of storms include some of the same cities and towns that were hit by hard uh, hit hard by damaging and deadly severe weather just one week earlier. Severe, uh, severe weather that erupted last Wednesday and reached a frenzied peak on Thursday produced at least 300 severe weather incidents, including more than 30 confirmed tornadoes. Nine people lost their lives in the storm. At least nine fatalities, eight in Alabama, one in Georgia. At least 50 residences damaged uh, in uh, Autauga County, Alabama. Multiple injuries and heavy damage in Selma, for Alabama, 35 confirmed tornadoes. Strongest was an F EF3. It says the first 16 days of January 2023 
have been incredibly busy in terms of the number of tornadoes. There were even two more preliminary reports on t tornadoes out of Iowa yesterday on Monday. As, a mid as of mid-month, there have been 119 reports of tornadoes so far this January, which compares to an average of 39 for the entire month, and we're on the 17th. So that's what we're seeing, that rapid movement of the magnetic north and the way that it affects the high pressure, low pressure areas on our planet. And look at what's been going on in California with all the flooding there, wave after wave coming in off the Pacific Ocean. Now this is the map starting Wednesday and through tomorrow night. Uh, torrential downpours, isolated tornadoes, damaging wind gust, 55 to 65 miles per hour. Local uh, storm max again at 75 mile per hour gust. You can see same area that was hit uh, last week. And this is going to continue to move to the east. This is Thursday through Thursday night. Everything's now through Alabama, up through the Carolinas, Charleston, Pittsburgh. You've got uh, the same chances. It's not as strong as some of the areas that we were seeing on Wednesday night. It's in the some risk of it, but we're going to have to wait to see how this plays out. Because what's happening, they're talking about there may be an extreme change that wasn't expected in the Arctic vortex that has to do with what we're talking about with these magnetic lines of force that a big chunk of it could peel off of the vortex itself, a big chunk of cold air, and bring unprecedented cold air to us very quickly. They're watching on that developing now. Now, this is current weather satellite imaging from 5.55 p.m. tonight, central time. It's been very warm here today. Uh, that's going to change, but what's happening is we're getting more moist air pulling in off the Gulf of Mexico you see in the bottom center. It's mixing with cooler air and moisture coming in from the west and north. You guys up in uh, Northern California, check this out. Come, you've got another wave here coming in. Now, they're saying it has replenished a lot of the reservoirs. That's a good thing, but the again, landslides, road closures, flooding, the damage from all of that is uh, getting to be catastrophic on, on a lot of places. But uh, it, moisture is good when you're in a drought situation. Too much at one time, again, trees uproot, major damage like that. You just got to be careful. Road closures when you least expect it. So you got another wave coming in off the Pacific Ocean. But th this system here we're seeing moving into Texas now, that's what's going to be affecting us as it mixes with it. You see here as it's going into night with the satellite changing. Uh, this moisture pulling in off the Gulf, that's going to be the trigger. So right now, be prepared for tomorrow and into Wednesday night here in the uh, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas area. That's going to change going into Thursday and Thursday night. Guys, I think we are looking at one of the major reasons that we're seeing these changes. Another thing about the rapid change in the magnetic field, a lot of scientists are not talking about it. You don't ever hear a meteorologist go into much detail about it. And it's kind of like mainstream media. They may know something that they don't want you to know. Why is there a rush to certain things happening right now? How is this, um, what does this have to do with the rapid changes and what the governments of the world are trying to do? And guys, again, watch for it dip in the arctic vortex a big chunk peeling off and uh, dropping some temperatures uh, possibly another record breaking setting drop uh, here in the u.s not predicted but uh, now they're starting to watch it you watch it it's a heads up be safe